Chapter 1. The Awakening. Today marks my seventh wedding anniversary, yet there's no joy in my heart, no celebration, no shared smiles or loving glances between my wife and me. I wasn't even allowed to celebrate. My in-laws have never seen me as an equal, a husband to their daughter, but rather as a servant, a mere appendage to their opulence and power. I'm not allowed to sit on the furniture in their lavish home as if I might tarnish it by mere contact. Worse, I'm forbidden even to dine next to my wife, Tina, the woman I once thought I loved beyond measure. But today, something inside me snapped, a spark ignited burning through the years of humiliation and degradation. I want to escape. I need to run away from this wicked family that has done nothing but torture me for years. Let me introduce myself. My name is Mark. I graduated from one of the top universities, where I not only earned the highest grades but also ranked among the best students in the entire country. I was a rising star with a promising future, but my life took an unexpected turn when I fell in love with Tina, my classmate, and now, my wife. She was stunning, captivating, and I couldn't help but be drawn to her. For years I admired her from afar, believing we were destined for each other. But love, I have learned, can be a cruel illusion. Tina came from an immensely wealthy family. Her grandfather was a powerful man who sponsored my education, my accommodation, my very life, all under one unspoken condition, that I be Tina's loyal companion. At first, it felt strange being treated like a plaything, but Tina was always sweet to me in private. She would protect me from the advances of other girls, guarding me jealously as if I were her personal possession. No one else could touch me, talk to me, or come near me. I was her exclusive toy. When we were younger, it felt special, as though I had a place in her life. But now, seven years into our marriage, that feeling has turned into a suffocating nightmare. I am no longer her cherished partner, but a pawn to be humiliated and controlled by her family. Her father and mother, once kind to me while her grandfather was alive, have transformed into tyrants since his death. They look at me as though I am beneath them. Every action I take, every word I speak, seems to provoke their disdain. And tonight, on my anniversary, I was finally broken. It started when I dared to drink champagne, a small act of rebellion perhaps to commemorate what should have been a joyous occasion. As I reached for my glass, I noticed the other guests sitting comfortably, laughing, enjoying themselves. Yet at, at the husband was relegated to the floor, the weight of their judgment pressed down on me, but I couldn't let it crush me any longer. I stood up, my heart pounding, and took a seat at the table, defiant for the first time in years. My father-in-law's eyes narrowed, his lips curling into a sneer. He approached me, his presence looming like a storm cloud. Who told you to sit on the chair? He spat, his voice filled with venom. Before I could respond, he kicked the chair out from under me, sending me sprawling to the ground. For a moment, I saw nothing but red. I stood up again, anger and pain coursing through my veins, and in a burst of rage, I flipped the table over. Plates and glasses shattered on the floor, echoing the chaos in my mind. What did I do to make you hate me this much? I yelled, my voice trembling. I had never felt so exposed, so raw. Tina, who had been silent all evening, rushed forward to defend her father. Her face was cold and unrecognizable. She slapped me hard across the face in front of everyone. The sting of her hand echoed the emotional torment I had endured for years. My heart, already fragile, shattered. Tina, I said, my voice low and cold, who am I to you? Do you even love me? She didn't answer. She paused as if the question had never crossed her mind, as if my feelings had never mattered. Her mother, ever the orchestrator of cruelty, threw her hand back at me. The heavy back struck my forehead, and I felt warm blood trickle down, mixing with the sweat and tears on my face. I waited for Tina to defend me to say something, anything, that might prove I hadn't wasted the last seven years of my life in this suffocating prison. But she said nothing, not a word. That was the final blow. I pulled a piece of paper from my jacket pocket. I had prepared it months ago, in quiet moments of clarity between the storms of torment. Let's get a divorce, I said calmly, holding out the papers. The room fell silent. Tina stared at the document as though it were a foreign object, something she never expected to see. For years she had held all the power. For years I had played my role as the obedient husband, the grateful son-in-law. But not anymore. 
I had finally found the courage to take my life back. Chapter 2. The Breaking Point Tina's eyes blazed with fury as she snatched the divorce papers from my hand. What is this? Is this your idea of a joke? She sneered, crumpling the document in her fists. You want to leave? Fine. Leave, her voice rang through the room, filled with venom. But don't even think of walking out with anything I gave you. Leave your bank cards, your phone, everything. You wouldn't have a thing without me or my family. For a moment, I was speechless. My heart thudded in my chest, but not from fear. No, it was something else. It was the final severing of a bond that had held me captive for too long. I stared at her, saying nothing. Her anger grew with my silence. You're all talk, Mark. She spat, her voice dripping with disdain. You're nothing but a big talker who's never had the guts to stand up for himself. I smiled, an odd, detached smile that surprised even me. Okay, I said my voice calm, almost unnervingly so. But before I leave, I want to destroy everything that reminds me of this marriage. Everything that ties me to you, to this house, to this life. Tina scoffed. Fine by me. This whole marriage was a mistake. I don't love you anymore. If I ever did, let's break it all together. Her words stung, but they also gave me a strange sense of freedom. This was the woman I had spent seven years trying to please, the woman I once thought I loved. And here we were, standing in the ruins of our relationship, ready to tear apart the final remnants of what had once been a marriage. We both stormed into our bedroom, the room that had once been a sanctuary, now nothing more than a hollow space filled with bitter memories. On the walls hung our wedding photos, smiles frozen in time, capturing a happiness that now felt false. In the closet were the keepsakes of our life together, the cards, the gifts, the symbols of a love that had long since died. For the next 15 minutes, we smashed everything. The photo frames shattered against the walls, glass raining down like the final remnants of a broken dream. I tore down the curtains, the bedsheets, anything that reminded me of us. Tina was just as fierce, ripping through our belongings with a rage that matched my own. With each crash, each piece destroyed, I felt lighter. The weight of seven years of pain, humiliation, and resentment lifted from my shoulders. It was as if the destruction of the physical items around us mirrored the crumbling of the emotional chains that had bound me to this life. I was freeing myself, piece by piece, moment by moment. Finally, the room was a wreck, pictures torn, furniture upturned, memories obliterated. I stood there, breathing heavily, my body shaking from the adrenaline. Yet in the chaos, I felt a strange calm wash over me. For the first time in years, I felt composed, in control of my own fate. Without another glance at Tina, I turned and walked out of the room, out of the villa. The night air hit my face cold and crisp. It was a quiet, starless night. But in the silence, I felt something I hadn't in a long time. Peace. The darkness outside felt less suffocating than the stifling air of that house, less binding than the chains of my past life. I made my way through the empty streets, each step taking me further from the villa, further from the life that had once been mine. My mind was surprisingly clear. There was no sadness, no regret, only a sense of finality. I reached the doorstep of an old friend's house, someone I hadn't seen in over five years. Our paths had diverged when I became entangled in Tina's world, but I knew I could count on him now. Knocking on the door, I braced myself for the awkwardness of explaining my situation. When the door opened, there he stood, surprised but welcoming. After a brief explanation of my circumstances, he listened quietly. His eyes grew wide with disbelief, but there was something else in his gaze something that looked like respect. I'm glad you left, he said, his voice firm. I never liked how they treated you. You deserve better. Two days had passed since that fateful night. Tina's world, one so meticulously crafted by wealth, status, and the invisible presence of Mark, began to feel like it was unraveling. At first, she couldn't pinpoint what exactly was bothering her. There was an unfamiliar restlessness inside her like a growing void she couldn't quite fill. She would find herself wandering the halls of the Grand Villa, her mind replaying the events of that night, but always avoiding the deeper truth clawing at her conscience. She stormed into the living room, where her parents sat stoic and unbothered, engrossed in the latest financial news on TV. Their faces were expressionless, cold, devoid of any empathy for the man who had disappeared from their lives. 
Has Mark come back? Tina blurted out, surprising even herself with the sudden outburst. Her father didn't even turn to look at her, his eyes fixed on the screen. He has nowhere else to go, he said in a dry tone, devoid of emotion. Sooner or later, he'll come crawling back. He needs us more than we need him. His words, though dismissive, briefly eased the knot in Tina's chest. Her father was always right. Mark would come back, wouldn't he? She got the strange, fleeting sense of relief as if the absence of Mark was merely a temporary inconvenience, something she could ignore for a while longer. But that sense of comfort didn't last. As the days stretched into weeks, something gnawed at her. The villa, though lavish and full of everything one could ever need, suddenly felt cold, empty. Even the luxuries that had once made Tina feel powerful seemed dull, lifeless. The people who surrounded her, the friends, the parties, the endless shopping trips, they all felt like distractions, masking a growing void. Meanwhile, miles away, Mark was thriving. His brilliance, once stifled by the oppressive atmosphere of Tina's family, was now unleashed. Within days of leaving the villa, Mark had found a position at a prestigious company. His reputation preceded him, and soon, his colleagues and superiors were singing his praises. His sharp mind and work ethic earned him quick promotions. For the first time in years, he wasn't merely surviving. He was living, free from the chains of his past. Back in the villa, Tina's frustration grew. It had been a month, and still no word from Mark. She tried calling his phone, but after it rang a few times, she remembered it was still sitting in her room, abandoned along with the rest of his belongings. She had taken it all that night, believing it was her way of punishing him for daring to leave. Now, it was clear she had cut off her only means of reaching him. A wave of panic swept over her. She couldn't understand it, but the absence of Mark began to feel less like a triumph and more like a loss. The gnawing sensation in her chest deepened into something she didn't want to admit, regret. Her mind raced as she tried to retrace her steps, thinking of places where Mark might have gone. She began reaching out to old mutual friends, but most of them had fallen out of touch with him over the years, some distancing themselves because of her. Tina's frustration turned to desperation as she realized how little she knew about Mark's life outside of the bubble of their marriage. In a last-ditch effort, she decided to visit the company she supposedly ran. After all, she was the CEO. At least on paper, Mark had been the one running the business from behind the scenes, managing everything while she enjoyed the perks of her title. She walked into the office for the first time in months, expecting to see the well-oiled machine Mark had kept running. Instead, she found chaos. Stacks of paperwork littered desks. Employees rushed around, stress etched into their faces, and unfinished projects pile up. Deadlines had been missed, contracts breached, and clients were growing restless. Mark's absence had thrown the entire company into disarray. The burden of running the business fell squarely on her shoulders, and for the first time, Tina realized how much Mark had been carrying all these years. She tried to step in to take charge, but the reality of the situation was far more than she could handle. Meetings became overwhelming, negotiations fell apart, and every decision seemed to spiral into further disaster. The phone calls from angry clients and legal threats grew more frequent. Every corner she turned, there was another crisis to solve, another deadline looming over her head. The pressure mounted, and Tina began to crack under its weight. Her nights became sleepless, filled with nightmares of her empire collapsing. Her days were consumed by the frantic attempt to keep everything from falling apart. She barely ate, lost weight, and the once glamorous lifestyle she had flaunted began to fade as exhaustion took its toll. As weeks passed, Hina's once flawless reputation in the business world began to tarnish. News spread of the company's instability, and competitors seized the opportunity to pounce. Lawsuits were filed for breach of contract, and the financial losses were staggering. Millions of dollars were slipping through her fingers, and for the first time, Tina realized that money couldn't fix everything. In the midst of the chaos, one thought kept circling in her mind, Mark. Every time she felt the crushing weight of the business on her shoulders, she thought of how effortlessly he had managed it all. Every time a deal fell through, she remembered how Mark had handled negotiations with skill and precision. She had never truly seen his worth until now, when she was left to face the storm alone. Tina's mind raced back to the years they had spent together. 
Every moment she had dismissed him, every cruel word she had thrown his way, came back to haunt her. Mark had been the backbone of her life, the silent force that held everything together while she enjoyed the spoils. And now, without him, her world was crumbling. She stood in the middle of her office one evening, staring out at the city's skyline, feeling utterly alone. Tears welled up in her eyes as the weight of her mistakes crashed down on her. She had pushed Mark away, believing that he was the problem. Now she realized that she had been the one tearing their lives apart all along. Tina sank into her chair, her hands trembling as she finally allowed herself to admit the truth. She had taken Mark for granted. She had treated him like a disposable part of her life, never appreciating the man who had loved her, supported her, and sacrificed so much for her. And now he was gone. In the quiet of her empty office, Tina whispered to herself, What have I done? But the walls around her offered no answer, only the cold silence of a life falling apart. Chapter 4. Rising and Falling While Tina's world spiraled downward, Mark was soaring. Free from the shackles of his suffocating marriage, his brilliance and drive quickly caught the attention of the business world. He landed an executive role at a prestigious company, and within months he was offered a CEO position at one of the fastest growing firms in the industry. His talent was undeniable, and for the first time in years, he felt the rush of success on his own terms. One of the key figures in Mark's new life was Sarah, an old college friend. Back in their university days, Sarah had always shown interest in Mark, but Tina had been fiercely possessive, ensuring that no one got close to him. Sarah, however, had never given up on Mark. She had tried numerous times to stay in touch, but Mark, under Tina's controlling influence, had cut ties to avoid any conflict. Tina had made it clear that Sarah wasn't welcome in their lives. But now things were different. Without Tina controlling his every move, Mark reached out to Sarah, rekindling their friendship. What began as casual conversations about business and life slowly evolved into something deeper. Sarah, now the CEO of her own successful company, offered Mark the position of co-CEO, knowing full well how skilled and visionary he was. It was a partnership built on mutual respect and admiration, something Mark had never experienced in his previous life. The timing of it all was almost poetic. Sarah and Tina had always been rivals, both in college and now in the business world. Their competition was infamous, with each woman constantly trying to outdo the other, whether in academics or later in corporate dealings. Sarah had always been a thorn in Tina's side, and now, with Mark at her side, she was ready to take Tina down on a much larger stage. Chapter 3. The Realization Two days had passed since that fateful night. Tina's world, one so meticulously crafted by wealth, status, and the invisible presence of Mark, began to feel like it was unraveling. At first, she couldn't pinpoint exactly what was bothering her. There was an unfamiliar restlessness inside her, like a growing void she couldn't quite fill. She found herself wandering the halls of the Grand Villa, her mind replaying the events of that night, but always avoiding the deeper truth clawing at her conscience. She stormed into the living room, where her parents sat stoic and unbothered, engrossed in the latest financial news on TV. Their faces were expressionless, cold, devoid of any empathy for the man who had disappeared from their lives. Has Mark come back? Tina blurted out, surprising even herself with the sudden outburst. Her father didn't even turn to look at her, his eyes fixed on the screen. He has nowhere else to go, he said in a dry tone, devoid of emotion. Sooner or later, he'll come crawling back. He needs us more than we need him. His words, though dismissive, briefly eased the knot in Tina's chest. Her father was always right. Mark would come back, wouldn't he? She got a strange, fleeting sense of relief, as if Mark's absence was merely a temporary inconvenience, something she could ignore for a while longer. But that sense of comfort didn't last. As the days stretched into weeks, something gnawed at her. The villa, Though lavish and full of everything one could ever need, suddenly felt cold, empty. Even the luxuries that had once made Tina feel powerful seemed dull, lifeless. The people who surrounded her, the friends, the parties, the endless shopping trips, all felt like distractions, masking a growing void. Meanwhile, miles away, Mark was thriving. His brilliance, once stifled by the oppressive atmosphere of Tina's family, was now unleashed, 
Within days of leaving the villa, Mark had found a position at a prestigious company. His reputation preceded him, and soon his colleagues and superiors were singing his praises. His sharp mind and work ethic earned him quick promotions. For the first time in years, he wasn't merely surviving, he was living free from the chains of his past. Back at the villa, Tina's frustration grew. It had been a month, and still no word from Mark. She tried calling his phone, but after ringing a few times, she remembered it was still sitting in her room, abandoned along with the rest of his belongings. She had taken it all that night, believing it was her way of punishing him for daring to leave. Now it was clear she had cut off her only means of reaching him. A wave of panic swept over her. She couldn't understand it, but the absence of Mark began to feel less like a triumph and more like a loss. The gnawing sensation in her chest deepened into something she didn't want to admit, regret. Her mind raced as she tried to retrace her steps, thinking of places where Mark might have gone. She began reaching out to old mutual friends, but most of them had fallen out of touch with him over the years, some distancing themselves because of her. Tina's frustration turned to desperation as she realized how little she knew about Mark's life outside of the bubble of their marriage. In a last-ditch effort, she decided to visit the company she supposedly ran. After all, she was the CEO, at least on paper. Mark had been the one running the business from behind the scenes, managing everything while she enjoyed the perks of her title. She walked into the office for the first time in months, expecting to see the well-oiled machine Mark had kept running. Instead, she found chaos. Stacks of paperwork littered desks, employees rushed around with stress etched into their faces, and unfinished projects piled up. Deadlines had been missed, contracts breached, and clients were growing restless. Mark's absence had thrown the entire company into disarray. The burden of running the business fell squarely on her shoulders, and for the first time Tina realized how much Mark had been carrying all these years. She tried to step in to take charge, but the reality of the situation was far more than she could handle. Meetings became overwhelming, negotiations fell apart, and every decision seemed to spiral into further disaster. The phone calls from angry clients and legal threats grew more frequent. Every corner she turned, there was another crisis to solve, another deadline looming over her head. The pressure mounted, and Tina began to crack under its weight. Her nights became sleepless, filled with nightmares of her empire collapsing. Her days were consumed by frantic attempts to keep everything from falling apart. She barely ate, lost weight, and the once glamorous lifestyle she had flaunted began to fade as exhaustion took its toll. As weeks passed, Tina's once flawless reputation in the business world began to tarnish. News spread of the company's instability, and competitors seized the opportunity to pounce. Lawsuits were filed for breach of contract, and the financial losses were staggering. Millions of dollars were slipping through her fingers, and for the first time, Tina realized that money couldn't fix everything. In the midst of the chaos, one thought kept circling in her mind, Mark. Every time she felt the crushing weight of the business on her shoulders, she thought of how effortlessly he had managed it all. Every time a deal fell through, she remembered how Mark had handled negotiations with skill and precision. She had never truly seen his worth until now, when she was left to face the storm alone. Tina's mind raced back to the years they had spent together. Every moment she had dismissed him, every cruel word she had thrown his way, came back to haunt her. Mark had been the backbone of her life, the silent force that held everything together while she enjoyed the spoils. And now, without him, her world was crumbling. She stood in the middle of her office one evening, staring out at the city skyline, feeling utterly alone. Tears welled up in her eyes as the weight of her mistakes crashed down on her. She had pushed Mark away, believing that he was the problem. Now, she realized that she had been the one tearing their lives apart all along. Tina sank into her chair, her hands trembling as she finally allowed herself to admit the truth. She had taken Mark for granted. She had treated him like a disposable part of her life, never appreciating the man who had loved her, supported her, and sacrificed so much for her. And now, he was gone. In the quiet of her empty office, Tina whispered to herself, What have I done? But the walls around her offered no answer, only the cold silence of a life falling apart. Chapter 4 Rising and falling, while Tina's world spiraled downward, Mark was soaring. 
free from the shackles of his suffocating marriage, his brilliance and drive quickly caught the attention of the business world. He landed an executive role at a prestigious company, and within months, he was offered a CEO position at one of the fastest-growing firms in the industry. His talent was undeniable, and for the first time in years, he felt the rush of success on his own terms. One of the key figures in Mark's new life was Sarah, an old college friend. Back in their university days, Sarah had always shown interest in Mark, but Tina had been fiercely possessive, ensuring that no one got close to him. Sarah, however, had never given up on Mark. She had tried numerous times to stay in touch, but Mark, under Tina's controlling influence, had cut ties to avoid any conflict. Tina had made it clear that Sarah wasn't welcome in their lives. But now, things were different. Without Tina controlling his every move, Mark reached out to Sarah, rekindling their friendship. What began as casual conversations about business and life slowly evolved into something deeper. Sarah, now the CEO of her own successful company, offered Mark the position of co-CEO, knowing full well how skilled and visionary he was. It was a partnership built on mutual respect and admiration, something Mark had never experienced in his previous life. The timing of it all was almost poetic. Sarah and Tina had always been rivals, both in college and now in the business world. Their competition was infamous, with each woman constantly trying to outdo the other, whether in academics or later in corporate dealings. Sarah had always been a thorn in Tina's side, and now, with Mark by her side, she was ready to take Tina down on a much larger stage. Chapter 5. The Cold Descent I could see the desperation in her eyes, the regret, but it was too late. The person she had been, the one who locked me out in the snow, who made me her servant for years, was too deeply etched in my memory. There was no going back. I met her gaze, my voice cold and unwavering. Tina, the mirror is shattered. You broke it with your own hands. You shattered my trust, my love, everything. There's nothing left to fix. Tina's eyes filled with tears, and she dropped her head, her voice barely a whisper. I can't do this without you. My company, everything's falling apart. I need you. I had heard rumors that her company was heading toward bankruptcy. Her poor decisions and lack of leadership had caught up with her. Since our divorce, she had been losing clients and millions of dollars. It was only a matter of time before her empire collapsed. But her financial ruin was no longer my concern. Tina, I said, my voice firm, you pushed me away. You destroyed everything we had. I'm not coming back. Tina fell to her knees, sobbing, her hands clutching the edge of my desk. Please, she begged. I'll do anything. I'll treat you right this time. I can't lose you. Her cries echoed in the office, but they didn't touch me. I had built a new life, a better life, without her. Sarah was waiting for me, someone who valued me, someone who saw me as an equal, not a servant. Without a word, I stood up and walked toward the door. Tina's sobs grew louder as she realized I wasn't going to change my mind. I glanced back once, seeing her crumple on the floor, a shell of the woman she had once been. But I felt no remorse, no guilt, just a sense of finality. As I stepped out into the crisp night air, I took a deep, liberating breath. The cold no longer stung. It felt refreshing. This time, I wasn't the one left out in the snow. I was the one moving forward, leaving the past and Tina behind, and I knew as I walked toward my future with Sarah that I would never look back. Chapter 6 The Final Chapter Two months had passed and the world continued to turn as it always does, but for Tina, her world had collapsed. News of her company's bankruptcy had spread like wildfire through the business community. Once a woman of immense pride and wealth, Tina had now lost everything. Her lavish lifestyle, her grand home, and her sense of superiority had all crumbled under the weight of her debts. I heard whispers of her downfall, how she had to sell off everything she owned just to cover the massive debts she and her family had incurred. Her parents, once so disdainful of anyone beneath their status, were now forced to work as laborers. They toil under the sun for daily wages, becoming the very kind of people they had spent their lives looking down upon. The irony was bitter and brutal. Tina, once a socialite who thrived on luxury, had taken a job as a waitress in a small, dingy restaurant on the outskirts of town. Word had reached me about how her boss treated her. 
shouting at her for the smallest mistakes, even striking her when his temper flared. It was a harsh fall from grace. But as far as I was concerned, it was no longer my concern. The woman who had once made me feel worthless was now facing the consequences of her own choices. My life, however, had moved on. I was no longer shackled by the memories of my past. Sarah and I had become inseparable, and as time passed, our bond only deepened. She was everything Tina was not. Kind, loving, supportive. Sarah had been my friend long before we became romantically involved, and now she was my future. We decided to get married. Our wedding was nothing short of magical. It wasn't just the lavish decorations or the grandeur of the event. It was the overwhelming sense of joy and love that filled the air. Unlike the cold, transactional atmosphere of my previous life with Tina, this was a celebration of something real, something pure. Sarah's family was there, welcoming me with open arms. They were humble, grounded people who embraced me as one of their own. Her parents were the polar opposite of Tina's. There was no arrogance, no sense of entitlement. They were kind, loving people, happy to see their daughter start a new chapter in her life with someone they believed in. Their warmth was a stark contrast to the cold, indifferent faces I had once been surrounded by. As the wedding festivities went on, I found myself lost in the moment. Sarah was radiant, her white gown flowing like a dream, her smile lighting up the entire room. She was elegant, confident, and impossibly beautiful, and I couldn't believe how lucky I was to have her by my side. But then, in the midst of the celebration, a strange feeling crept over me. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw a familiar figure standing at the edge of the crowd, a shadowy presence lingering in the background, barely visible amidst the sea of guests. For a moment, my heart skipped a beat. Could it be Tina? I quickly shook the thought from my mind. It was impossible. Tina had no place here, not in this new chapter of my life. She was a ghost from the past, and ghosts had no business haunting the present. Still, the image of her standing there, watching, lingered in the back of my mind. Perhaps it was just my imagination, a lingering remnant of the life I had left behind. Sarah must have noticed my momentary distraction because she pinched my elbow playfully. Where are your thoughts, mister? She teased, her eyes sparkling with mischief. I couldn't help but laugh, shaking off the last of my doubts. Leaning in, I kissed her softly on the lips, feeling the warmth of her love and the promise of our future together. Nowhere, I whispered, nowhere but right here with you. The rest of the evening was a blur of laughter, dancing, and toasts. Friends and family gathered around us, offering their blessings and well wishes. Every time I looked at Sarah, I was reminded of how far I had come, how much I had overcome to get to this point. This was my second chance at happiness, and I wasn't going to waste it. As the night wore on, I found myself thinking back to Tina one last time. Her fate, though tragic, was something I could no longer dwell on. Life has a way of balancing the scales, and for Tina, that meant facing the consequences of the life she had built. It wasn't my responsibility to save her or to feel pity for her, I had done my time in that dark, cold prison, and now I was free. Sarah and I danced long into the night, surrounded by the people who mattered. The music, the laughter, the love, it was all a reminder that life moves forward, no matter what. The past was behind me, and the future stretched out ahead, full of promise and possibilities. As we left the venue that night, hand in hand, I looked up at the stars above. For the first time in years, I felt truly at peace. The weight of my past had been lifted, and in its place there was only lightness, hope, and love. Tina, wherever she was, was nothing more than a distant memory now, a chapter that had been closed, locked away in the vault of things that no longer mattered. I had found my way out of the darkness, and with Sarah by my side, I was ready to step into the light. And so I did.